Now we're going to talk about the concept of escape velocity. So we're supposed to talk about this for gravity, but I want to tell you there's another kind of escape velocity. This is for your physics class. The escape velocity for a physics class. It's basically the r vector from uh, the u to the door divided by the delta t of how often your professor looks up. So when I'm lecturing about escape velocity, I know most people thinking about that one, but that's not the one we want. We want the speed needed to escape a gravity well. We want off the Earth, although we want more than that. So let's think of it this way. Here we go. Here's the Earth. There it is again. And we've got this object here, and we want to get it completely out of the well. So let's draw the gravity well here. So this is R, how far we're going to go from the center of the Earth. And we know the gravity well is sort of a 1 over a negative 1 over R term. And I'm not going to draw it inside the Earth. Because you've got to remember, uh, all the formulas, if you're outside of a body, all the formulas work as though it's a point mass at its center. But if we go inside the Earth, then the formulas don't work anymore. So I'm going to kind of draw a dotted line here and say only out here do we use our formula for a point mass Earth. Okay, so it's coming along and it's going like that. We won't go inside of there. Okay. So the question is, if I throw something up, do I get out of the well? Right? If I take this chalk, now let me get some broken pieces. If I take this chalk and I give it a little velocity, Oh, it didn't get out of the well, did it? If I give it a little bit more, oh, not out of the well. If I throw it a little bit harder, oh, it comes back down. Let me try one more and see if I can hit the ceiling here. Almost. Oh, not quite. We were not escaping the gravity well. We were making it like to here, going up and then falling back down, back into the well. What we want to calculate is how fast would something have to be moving to make it all the way to infinity? Right? That's really what we care about. So we need um, an initial kinetic energy um, equal to what? To this potential energy right here. Right? So this is u, by the way, and there's 0. So this is the u, uh, I'll put e, u escape that we need. And u escape then is just the final, it's just the difference between these two points. This one minus this one, well this one is zero minus a negative this one. It's really just plugging um, r of the earth into the potential energy formula. Right? So the u that you need is big G, mass of the earth, uh, mass of the object, there's an E for, I'll use a big E for Earth. Uh, mass of the Earth, mass of the object over the radius of the Earth. Because we're going from the radius of the Earth, and we're trying to get all the way to infinity, where U is zero. So we say that's equal to 1 half mv squared. Right? Where again, this is the mass of the object. So we see that, and you just solve for V. That's how fast you initially have to be going to make it out, cancel mass of the object, and two, and you take a square root, and you get that your escape velocity is, uh, we get a two, yeah, it's all in a square root, two, two big G, mass of the Earth over radius of the Earth. That's if we're escaping the Earth. And if you do that, you get about 11, kilometers per second, which is pretty fast. Right? A bullet goes a few kilometers per second, so pretty fast. So really, this sort of simple calculation of escape velocity isn't, you know, this isn't what NASA uses to put uh, spaceships in orbit for many reasons. One is you don't just give it all its kinetic energy at the surface and then just watch it go because it would burn up in the atmosphere. You don't really want to go 11 kilometers per second in the Earth's atmosphere you would burn up and fall apart. 
Uh, so of course what a rocket really does is it pushes as it goes. It gains kinetic energy as it thrusts and the, the rocket comes out of the, out of the back. It doesn't give it all at once. The other reason, this isn't really what you want to do. You know, most things you're sending into space, you don't want to send them all the way to infinity and never see them again. You want to put them in orbit or send them to a planet or something like that. So, I mean, it's an interesting parameter to look at. It's not one you use when you think about rockets in orbits. Um, but it is interesting to think about, say, you're in some sci-fi scenario and, like, trapped on an asteroid. Then that might be useful to have some idea of how much kinetic energy, how fast you need to go to be able to escape the uh, potential well of the asteroid or the small moon or whatever you're stuck on, especially if there's no uh, atmosphere to burn up in, you know. So that's what it's good for. Uh, I know that during this lecture you're probably calculating this. Remember, you're watching this on YouTube, so you can escape at any slow velocity that you like.